Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday, I'm feeling uh, a little bit better so I decided to show you another game, uh, it's uh, a very nice attacking game uh, and the difference between these ga uh, this game and other games between uh, Alpha Zero and Stockfish is that the, the ones we've seen so far have been played without opening books and uh, this one uh, it's uh, played using opening books and positions that were used in the 2016 TCEC, so the, the top chess engine competition. So the first, uh, the first 12 moves are book-based and, uh, and the Alpha and Stockfish take it from them. Uh, so let's uh, check out this very nice game. It's really uh, a wonderful attacking game and uh, Alpha just shows us how, how, how things are done and how one, one is supposed to push pawns uh, to win games. So let's check it out. Uh, we have d4 by alpha, uh, d5, c4, c6, so the Slav defense, uh, knight to f3, knight to f6, knight to c3, and now e6. So this is all standard theory. Uh, e3, uh, knight b to d7, queen to c2, and bishop to d6. And here we have g4. Uh, it seems like a, like a pawn sacrifice, but not really. This is the main line uh, of this uh, of this Stoltz line of the Slav, uh, where black if black captures, then we go into rook g1, and black didn't really win a pawn or anything, simply after h5, h3, knight goes back, white will win back the pawn on, uh, on g7. And while you have some tricks here, for example, black can go knight to g4, uh, and let's say after h captures on g4, you could go queen to f6 uh, with an attack on the rook and also on the knight on f3. So after rook h7, as the queen is protecting him, captures, captures, and after queen captures on f3, uh, white will capture on h5 and the white will always be better here. Uh, so black didn't really achieve anything by grabbing this pawn. Uh, so instead bishop to b4, and this is still uh, everything from the book. Uh, bishop to d2, we have queen e7, uh, rook to g1 now, supporting the g4 pawn, bishop captures on c3, bishop captures on c3, and the knight to e4. Uh, we have queenside castle, kingside castle, and uh, uh, up, up until this point, uh, this was uh, all moves from the book. And it's interesting, there exists uh, a game between Nakamura and Zuchan from 2004, uh, where Nakamura uh, played bishop to d3, and the game continues. Knight captures, uh, queen captures, and Nakamura was able to win this game, but it took him some uh, 182 moves. So instead, uh, after this castles, uh, Alpha Zero does not agree with Nakamura's bishop to d3, but uh, Alpha Zero decides to keep the bishop. So bishop to e1. And as of this point, this is move 12. So uh, the first, uh, up until this point, the moves were familiar, but already the first move Alpha plays in this position, uh, we have a completely new game on the board. Uh, and okay, uh, we have... Uh, alpha preserves the bishop pair, but uh, Stockfish also preserves a very strong knight on e4, so it's uh, kind of a trade-off. Uh, b6, preparing to develop the light square bishop, we have h4 by alpha, pushing those pawns. Bishop to b7, and now the only way to start an attack and eliminate black's uh, strong knight uh, on e4 is knight to g5. This comes with a pawn sacrifice, but alpha doesn't mind. We have knight captures, pawn captures, queen captures, and now f4. So you've sacrificed a pawn, but you, you've you started an attack on the king side. Uh, you have a semi-open uh, h-file for your rook and the queen. At some point, uh, moves like rook to h1, queen to h2 perhaps will be possible with a, with a nice attack against the black king. Uh, queen to e7, and now comes king to b1. You don't want to start an attack against the king side uh, before this very nice prophylactic king to b1. At, at some point you know that the, the rook will come to c8 and perhaps the c file will open, so you don't want your king and queen to be occupying the same file. Uh, c5 by Stockfish. Uh, bishop to d3, the threat is to capture on h7, so uh, Stockfish defends it. We have g6, and now c captures on d5. Uh, now, if you reply e captures on d5, you've closed the, the bishop, you're no longer controlling h1. And now queen to h2 followed by rook to h1 could be very unpleasant. Uh, so, we have c captures on d4. And now this uh, same idea of uh, queen h2 can be met with bishop captures on d5, where now h1 is controlled. And after e4, bishop to b7, rook h1, uh, going after the h7 pawn, black can defend with f6. And now uh, the queen is defending the h7 pawn, black is up material and will most likely defend and enjoy a better game. Uh, so this will be too slow. Uh, so instead, uh, e4 by alpha. Uh, and here, uh, if you play pawn captures, then you get e5, nothing to be done here. Uh, so Stockfish simply develops the rook, rook a to c8, with an attack on the queen, and only now queen to h2. 
Uh, we have f6, uh, a preemptive defensive move, as the queen is now already guarding uh, d8 7 pawn. Uh, and here, d captures on e6 will be too slow, because now black will not recapture immediately. First knight to c5. And now after bishop to b4, pinning the knight, queen can capture uh, on e6. And now after f5, queen e5, uh, stockfish will offer a trade of queens, and white's attack is happening too slow. So after f6, uh, alpha doesn't waste time, f5 immediately. Uh, and okay, we have e captures on d5, but now f captures on g6. Uh, h captures on g6 and rook to h1, already threatening queen to h8, and even though a stockfish did create an escape route for his king, it will not help him all that much. You don't have time for something like pawn captures on e4, uh, queen h8, check king f7, and now the rook uh, will check the king and win the queen. It's a game over for black. Uh, so after rook to h1, we have queen to g7, not allowing the queen to land on h8, uh, and now... Uh, how do you continue this attack with white? You've already given up uh, some of your pawns, you have to try something. Uh, if you try this to release your bishop, then bishop captures on d5, already comes with an attack on the rook. It's very hard to see how this attack continues for white. So uh, alpha finds a very nice continuation of this attack. Bishop to c2. And now you are directly preventing black from doing d captures on e4 because of bishop to b3 check. And now after rook to f7, blocking, there really isn't anything else. You, you can block with the queen due to queen to h8 checkmate. So after rook to f7, rook captures on d4. Uh, even making room for this bishop to come to c3 now. Uh, and after knight to e5, g5. You're now threatening to open up this diagonal. And after something like knight to f3, attacking the queen and the rook, uh, white will easily win with bishop captures. And now... Uh, either queen captures and queen to h8 checkmate or you can capture with the king uh, and then rook d7 check will win after king moves queen d6 and you will lose the queen and the game there is one tricky idea after g5 stockfish could try the the sneaky knight to d3 uh, but of course uh, alpha would not fall for this uh, you could only fall, fall, fall for this if you go for the same line bishop captures uh, king captures rook d7 check king moves and now if you just capture the queen you will get rook to c1 checkmate uh, but of course i mean it's uh, highly unlikely that alpha would fall for this after knight d3 you could simply move the bishop and then uh, no mate threats are available uh, but a nice thing to show uh, so after uh, bishop to c2 we have knight to e5 and now bishop to b3 just the same and it's very hard for black uh, this h file is completely in control of white you cannot ca you can never capture here and white will at some point capture and play d6 so uh, black will struggle here g5 not allowing white to push g5 himself and now bishop to g3 and now what do you play here uh, the threat is <coughs> sorry about that uh, the threat is bishop captures uh, on e5. If you try knight f3, then you get uh, queen to f2, attacking the knight. And now if you go back, e captures on d5 uh, with e6 to follow. So after bishop to g3, you have knight captures on g4, and now queen to h3, <coughs> uh, attacking the knight on g4. Uh, and now you can no longer go back. If you go knight e5, then you get bishop captures, pawn captures, and now queen to e6 check. Queen f7, queen captures on e5, threatening rook to h8 checkmate. Uh, after queen to f6, you get bishop captures on d5 with check, captures captures with check, queen uh, king moves, uh, and now queen to d7. Uh, you cannot block check with the rook because queen captures rook, you would have to block with the queen, and then queen captures on e5, white is just all over the place. Queen blocks, again queen d7 check, queen blocks, and now queen to g4 uh, with the threat of rook to d7 winning the queen, and also queen to g5 a terrible threat. Uh, after queen g6, rook d6, rook d7 check, king moves, and now uh, after queen to h3, uh, there is no way to stop queen h8 checkmate. You can give one check, but still, there's no defense against queen to h8 now. Uh, so, after this queen to h3, you cannot go back, you have to go e3. So, knight to e3 comes with an attack on the rook. Uh, rook captures on d4, and now comes king to f7. Now Stockfish is trying to escape with the king. Uh, also an interesting move might be knight to c4, simply to diminish uh, the bishop's influence over this diagonal, uh, but it won't, it won't work. After queen e6 check, queen, e queen f7, uh, queen to f5 now. Uh, now you've uh, forced the queen to come on this same diagonal as the king, and e captures here, and d6 is a terrible threat. Uh, after something like rook c to e8, e captures on d5, knight to e3, attacking the queen, but then queen to d3 and the d6 is coming, uh, black will be lost here. 
Uh, so after rook captures on d4, we have king to d7 trying to escape, but now bishop to f2 with a double attack against the knight. Uh, and here you can't really do anything with the knight. The pawn is controlling f5, queen is controlling g4. Uh, we've already seen that knight to c4 doesn't work, so black tries uh, rook to h8. Uh, and here, uh, of course, you don't want to capture and allow rook captures on h1. Black would, of course, be winning here. Uh, but uh, you can play the very nice queen to d7 check. And this is what alpha played, and now everything falls into place. Uh, king to g6. Uh, queen captures. This comes with check. King captures. Rook captures. Rook captures. And now the knight lies undefended on e3. Bishop captures. And now uh, rook to e8. We have rook to a4 going after the a7 pawn. We have a6 and now bishop captures on b6. But now pawn captures on e3. And as you can see, alpha is up a piece, but stockfish has three connected pass pawns. If you can push one of these pawns really quickly, then surely that will be compensation enough for the piece. Uh, but alpha doesn't allow it. Rook to d4. The threat is rook to d7 check, winning the bishop. And let's see just what happens if uh, stockfish ignores uh, alpha and simply pushes the pawn. Then rook d7 check, king moves, rook captures on b7, uh, and now after e2, white will simply prevent the pawn. Uh, you will bring a queen into the game, bishop captures, rook captures, and after rook to c2, uh, white will very quickly win the a6 pawn, but then the rook and bishop and king will uh, be uh, more than capable of stopping the two pawns, and the white will then also have two pass pawns on the queen side with a winning game. Uh, so, Stockfish goes rook to c8, uh, sorry, uh, uh, bishop to c8, uh, but now alpha does it uh, differently. Uh, we have king to c1, brings the king into the game, e3, pushes the pass pawn, uh, but now rook to d8, uh, alpha forces a trade of rooks and uh, finds that this is winning for him. Uh, you have to trade rooks as the bishop uh, will fall, so rook captures, bishop captures, and now king to g6. But now, as the e3 pawn is pushed uh, so far away, there's no way to protect him with anything. So, bishop to b6. Uh, we have bishop to b7, and now bishop to c2 check. We have king to f7, and bishop captures on e3. King to e6, we have king to d2, we have king to d6, and now bishop to d3. And uh, it was in this position uh, that Stockfish resigned the game. Uh, one pawn is no compensation for the piece, and uh, however white plays this, this will be a winning endgame. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and uh, really do hoping you're having a, a better Sunday than me. I'm still under under the influence of my uh, my flu. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really happy about this game and <laughs> I'm really satisfied in how Alpha just pushes, 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 uh, blocks everything, you know, uh, constricts uh, any movement by Stockfish and then uh, it seems that uh, Stockfish's posi position simply deterior deteriorates uh, upon itself and uh, at some point you just have to give up a piece. I mean, uh, on move 34, uh, Alpha is already up a piece and, uh, you know, being able to calculate out everything precisely uh, has a very nicely winning game. And uh, it always reminds me, uh, for example, my father-in-law, he would always play against... Uh, uh, stockfish and uh, he would always play attacking moves he would always just attack 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 and everyone would always tell him uh, you can't beat stockfish like that but uh, you know now now it seems that he was right all along that this is in fact a way to play against stockfish so yeah i, I really found that uh, very funny uh, but yeah uh, like i said i do hope you enjoyed the game uh, I would like to thank uh, Co uh, Codeworks, uh, Angus McLeod, uh, Alexandru Eperon, Polak Shlomo, and Ronald Wagner for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, uh, with some more interesting videos and without uh, the, the crackling voice in <laughs> this. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thank you all, and uh, I will see you soon.